Hi friends of golfers, this is something I call the stomp and go drill. So this is for those that really struggle with interaction with the ground and how we're supposed to use it. Where are we moving into our feet so we can get some good ground reaction forces. And I know that's the kind of buzzword of the day, ground reaction forces, but what is it? And why, why, why is it such a big buzz these days? Well, so what happened is, you know, through technology, we start finding out more and more things. And so we start measuring and then we measure more and we're like, why is this person, you know, creating more swing speed than this person? And you, you start breaking the swing down and then they had the ability to start looking when certain sensors came out and applied them to golf to look where our center of pressure is. And then it built up and that just kind of said where our pressure is moving, mass, versus pressure. So pressure is more important to you. I try to not use the word weight when we're moving around. We're moving pressure. I don't ever want to move mass like this. I want to move pressure. Pressure, okay? So it kind of showed where the center pressure is moving along a path. So then we started looking at horizontal. Um, then you have vertical. These are the the uh, you know the ground ground reaction force and they have rotational and so typically a golfer is better in one of them is usually their prime but when they're best at you know then they'll have a second and then third usually not as good so kind of at the beginning of this thing when, when they started to find out more about ground reaction forces like okay so if you're really good at say rotational really good and then finally you know you get to um, vertical and you're you know you don't even make the charts for a pro you're you're really low well so let's just increase vertical then because the other two one of them's great the other's right on the tour average the third one is awful so let's increase that third one sounds reasonable doesn't it well like many things found out that didn't work okay so because what you were doing is you ended up taking away basically something that they're really good at to give them something that they'd have to work really hard and never truly excel at it, okay? So you kind of want to, I'm not saying you never want to work on one of those three that you're not great at, but let's really work on, let's see, the, the thing is, you know, getting into this is everybody's different, so I don't want to say everybody's the same with this, but if you are a person that is, if I go like this, we have different posts, front, middle, rear. If I go like this, this is a rear post player. They're moving over their leg. They're gonna probably be a very, a person who's very, the lateral movement is where they create their power, okay? Now we got middle. So just the person's kind of in the middle. And then you got somebody who's more in the front. So they kind of load up more in the front leg. They're gonna be vertical, um, the rotary for the middle, okay? So those would be what they're dominant at just by the movement that I showed you of figuring that out, okay? Um, all you do is put your club right here on your upper thigh and just kind of go back and see where you are. I kind of go in between very middle to a little bit to the front. Um, so I think I'm kind of the middle and I mean, I know I am, it's just, it's what the stats show too. So we learn more about the ground reaction forces and with, the, with how they work and how they can help us. So Newton's laws help a lot too, to understand what we put in we're going to get back equally. So we put force into the ground, we're going to get that back. It just doesn't come out of nothing. I have to push, if I push in, I'm going to get some, I'm going to get that back. Okay. So let's go over a drill like that. It's going to help you start to feel the movement of what we want to do, um, of moving our, of feeling where we're kind of moving with our feet and pressure points in our feet to start to get a little bit of a grip, grip of what happens down low. And, I, and I'll add one more thing here that um, when you talk to um, high level golfers, um, it, it's interesting you'll find verse, let's say the regular amateur, and you'll ask the high level, very high level golfer about their golf swing. What will they typically what they'll say is you'll hear them talk from the ground up about their golf swing. Typically. Now you ask any most amateurs and where are they? top down typically. Oh, my shoulders, my hips, my elbow, boom, boom, any of those things. Well, the other guys are talking about the ground. And so, and I, I can just tell you this, when you can, and I see this in my students all the time, that jump to that next level, when they start to understand their interaction with the ground and that becomes what they use to move 
Now you're already using it, but it's more, it's more of what I'm saying is being fully aware. So they're aware now that they're going to start their golf swing by using the ground in a certain way. And they're going to continue with the ground in a certain way. You know, when, when they have those feelings and start talking in that manner, that's, they've gone over to this new realm of a golfer. And, um, that's to me, that's really neat to see from, you know, just working on it that, Hey, you know, this is, we just built this new golfer that is talking very, very different than when I met him. Um, so how are we going to start? There's many different ways. I'll say it right, right off the bat to start working on this, but I think a really good way to kind of feel how we want to kind of move. Um, it, it's simple. It's just basically, I just want you to set up, let's try this without a ball here first. So we're just going to set up like normal. It's totally normal. Okay. Now I want you to do this. I want you to lift your right heel up off the ground. Okay. I'm going to bring the club up here to start. Now I'm going to go real slow. So when this club comes back, I'm going to hammer this heel down. And then I'm also going to start picking up this front foot. So I'm going to end up, I'm hammering the heel down. So I'm feeling when I say heel, it's inside right below where you tie your shoelaces. So about right here. Okay not back here okay that's where that's where i'm feeling when i move when i do my swing i'm feeling pressure into my trail heel i'm right here i i feel like I, I push really hard into the ground right here so i don't go like that or anything so it's not mass and isn't going over there i am pushing pressure hard so when i get on a pressure mat or plates and look at mine you know i'll see myself spike up to 80 or 90 and my body hasn't moved it's still in the same spot but i'm pushing so hard into that I'm creating pressure and that's a lot better than just moving your mass over there because you can't get your mass back in time most likely if you're doing doing it like I see most amateurs um, so we're just gonna go we'll, well, I'll finish this off heel up pound that down and now so when we get to the top of our backswing okay I have moved into my trail heel told you shoot laces and then my left I'm on my front toe okay toes I say kind of the pad, not the toe, and the heels off the ground, okay? So before I even had gotten to this point, I should have, I'm going real slow, but I will slam that down, the heel down, and I'm starting to rotate. Now when I'm ro rotating, I slam that down, I'm starting to push back on my left side. Now that I'm moving out towards my toe on the right. So I'm feeling this movement like this to help me get out of the way. So what actually clears your hips? This is like this huge misconception. You know, I see most people, oh, I gotta clear my hips because what do they see on TV or something? They just, you know, they turn off like this or they just, they try to spin out. Like it is never a good idea. And I promise you this to try to clear your hips in the golf swing by doing any movement, this like this, this, this tried effort like that because it's false. Okay. It needs to happen from the origins of the ground, what we do. So, when I'm on the ground here, so I've done that, heels up. Now watch when I go, I push my heel down. Watch as I push back from my toe towards my heel. I'm pushing really hard on the ground. Look what it does. You see my leg gets straightened up, but look what happens at the same time when I push back. The hip. Look what it does. So you see, I'm on, now I'm on the outside of my foot. You'll see Bryson, it goes really hard. He'll eventually go like that. But there's your sign you've done it, okay? So that's... That's kind of the up and down we want to do. So we're feeling this boom to toe. We're going to slam this left one down or front. And then we're just going to rotate. It's going to feel pretty natural when we do it. So start off pretty slow. Now remember, when we are getting the, uh, the heel down on our, on our uh, front leg, um, that has to happen when we do it right before I finish my backswing. So I would be like this. Well, this, well, the club is still going up. I've slammed that down. Okay. So that's the same thing. Like when you're throwing a ball, see how the, my midsection is going like this and my arm is still going back. Same movement of anything for baseball or whatever. When you're hitting, you get those, the separation of the two. And that's what we need to do in golf. That's why you'll see all those drills I show of step drills and stuff like that. You'll find on under my name online, YouTube or wherever, Instagram. They're all to help with that feeling of separation of your lower and upper. Okay. So 
you just want to work on this drill and start to, you know, pick up pace with it. Um, you'll find out eventually it's going to be easier the faster you go, okay? And this is something we can definitely, you know, hit balls with. I'm just going to go like this. So I'm not going to try to hit this hard. I'm going to go here, heel up. Okay, so I'm just looking at my stats here on TrackMan. So, you know, I hit it a little thin, but it was almost pretty dead straight. I have it set up to a pin. I put it about, I don't know, uh, 10 feet away. So, you know, club path was 1.5, face angle was 0.2. Um, you know, I kept, just caught it a little bit thin. Tack angle was down 4.9, about four inches out in front. So, this is the drill you want to do to start to learn how the ground, how you are going to interact with the ground. Boom, boom, before you finish your backswing, and let that push to open, okay? So if you want to know, if you're not aware of exactly what impact looks like, you need to know this. Um, I can't tell you how many times I'm in a lesson with somebody who's even been playing a long time and ask them, can you show me what impact looks like? And they just say, I don't know. So think about this. How are you ever going to get in a good impact position if you don't even know what it looks like, right? Just, we're not going to. So impact, how are we going to do it? Just kind of watch what I do here. Okay, so look, I'm out here. Hips are probably 30 something degrees. Shoulders maybe slightly open. Okay, you're gonna see this tilt back. My head's gonna be still back on the ball. And here, hands are nicely ahead. I'm gonna be coming down like that perfectly on it, catching it the ball first and probably low point four inches ahead. Okay, so hands leading, right? So we should see if we look at a video that the swing will go hands will go left, the club will kind of be out here, okay? So, we're gonna work on this heel up, and you can just practice do it with, with, uh, without a ball, okay? If that helps you feel, start to feel what we're doing with the ground. Uh, it's something I took, had to take a lot of time off this last two years um, due to my hand. I just started being able to swing again with hand surgery, many of you already know. Um, it's something I need to do, <laughs> find time to, because I just noticed like doing these, I just don't feel you know as comfortable you know, doing them as I, you know, used to be. So it's something I'm gonna have to add into my routine to get that good feel going again of working with the ground. So building blocks, right? So Eric Solberg, thank you for watching. This is Eric Solberg, EJS Golf, EJSGolf.com. Thanks.